This video was kindly sponsored by the Nick Morn Foundation. Welcome to the UK's first zero carbon eco town. Where the developers have used cutting edge technology to make sure that the residents can live in the most sustainable way. This is a pioneering development with 400 highly energy efficient homes, creating the UK's first truly zero carbon community. In this video, we are going to be speaking with two people who know all about the project, and as they show us around, we'll share why this community is so unique. We are here in Oxfordshire at Elmsbrook Ecotown to see how the developers and residents have integrated sustainable solutions into nearly every facet of their lives. To start, solar panels are positioned on the roof of every home, and once this project is completed, it will be the UK's largest residential solar array. None of the waste from these homes goes to landfill, reducing 30% of the project's carbon footprint. 40% of the development is green space with lots of wild areas to encourage biodiversity. With cycle and pedestrian routes, a bus stop within 400 meters of every home, live timetable updates in each home, charging points for electric vehicles, and an electric car club, residents are being encouraged to adopt more sustainable modes of travel. We spoke with Lewis Knight, a sustainability expert from Bioregional, to get a better understanding of the project. I'm Lewis Knight, I'm a program manager with Bioregional. We are a, a sustainability charity, social enterprise and consultancy. We work with a whole range of different partners from across the world to create more sustainable solutions. Uh, we are here at North West Bicester on um, Elmsbrook, the UK's first ecotown site. So Elmsbrook itself uh, is going to be just shy of 400 homes, um, but Elmsbrook is kind of the first phase of what we call Northwest Vista. So Northwest Vista is the sort of wider allocation, which is 6,000 homes. All of the homes have a grid connection, so they're all connected to the, to the electricity grid. They get their heat and their hot water from the combined heat oh, and power okay. plant. Okay. So instead of gas pipes running underneath the uh, roads and pavements, yeah. you have hot water pipes, yeah. and then the hot water pipes interface with the individual homes. They have their own radiators and um, systems that way. The electricity they get from the grid but um, you know they've got huge solar panels here so during times when it's very sunny they will actually be getting their electricity in their home direct from the solar panels and the idea is over the course of a year when you add up everything um, the carbon benefit of the combined heat and power all of the solar generation that gets you to net zero there is a real aspiration and drive from the developer to reduce what we call embodied carbon there was an aspiration to sort of really kind of drive that down so some of the things that i can touch on are you know there's a, they use a timber frame uh, the timber frame was sourced locally um, in a nearby town um, so not only do you have a you, you know a low in low embodied carbon material um, wood but also it's sort of used and sort of made locally which which is fantastic so this is actually a thermo wood so it's um heated up to a particular temperature and basically the wood becomes inert, it won't rot, so therefore you don't need to maintain it, you don't need any sort of preservatives. I think before you start to think about energy and carbon um, in terms of say renewables and things like that, you need to think about how do you reduce your energy consumption. So it's through really high levels of fabric, really good air tightness. I really like the green infrastructure spaces. I like the fact that you've got um, sort of wider buffer zones around the um, hedgerows. You know, it can be quite easy to kind of just see a um, hedgerow and go, I'm going to develop right up to that um, hedgerow, but actually thinking a little bit creatively and thinking, you know, can we leave that extra five meters either side, leave it, leave it uncut, maybe only cut it once, a, maybe only cut it once or twice a year, you get that added biodiversity benefit. And I guess one of the other big ones is the bus as well. So I think um, transport was always going to be a big issue for a site like this, where you're still in a relatively sort of suburban um, development so yes we want to drive down the amount of trips by private cars but there's also a sense of realism that people need cars to move around and so it's about it's about providing the stick you know maybe um, by reducing car parking spaces slightly but it's also about the carrot it's about incentivizing people to make better choices right and actually by providing the bus there from day one you're providing them an alternative that where that maybe necessarily they might just get in their vehicle if we look at our ecological footprints as like human beings if everyone lived as we do in the UK, we'd need three planets to support ourselves and a lot of that's on our lifestyle, right? And a big part of that is where we live, so the energy that we consume, how we move around, but a lot of it is to do with our food and, our, and the stuff that we buy. 
So if we can sort of start to make small changes here and start to link up um, sort of food decisions by actually, you know, we can start to grow things here ourselves. You know, it's not, you know, it's not gonna make a massive impact, but it just starts to sort of plant that seed. Yeah. I guess the big thing is we need these types of places to show that it can be done, right? We need these types of places to showcase them, exactly why we're here today talking about it. It's about the carrot and the stick, you know, we need regulation, you know, we need policy regulation to um, increase and we're seeing that. We can argue about whether or not that's enough, um, but we also need the carrot, you know, we need to see why, why will people build that, build, build to this high standard. And what we're seeing is there are really great, small, innovative developers that see the value in doing it, but it's still quite niche. Yeah. I've, I genuinely feel like the market is starting to realise this. What we've seen over the past two years, at least with uh, uh, with the recent pandemic, is a growing environmental consciousness. You know, people are starting to make lifestyle decisions based on the environment, and you know, scaling that up, people will begin to make housing choices based on the environment. So it's very much about showcasing, showing that it can be done that's probably the big thing showing that it can be done on a big scale and it's not just an individual home you know showing that it can be done and showing that it can be done by the mainstream as well elmsbrook also has an eco business center located in the center of the town providing a base for businesses as well as a co-working space for locals to network and share ideas we spoke with lucy wendon from town square to find out more about the building so my name's lucy i am the community manager here um, and I work for a B Corp called Town Square Spaces. Um, we basically run a um, collaborative workspace in, from this building. And uh, yeah, we just try and help people start and grow their businesses. And the idea with this building being here is that everyone who lives here can work from the estate. And the idea is that it's just getting rid of the cars, getting people out of their cars, working from a location, um, you know, the most amazing passive house plus building um, which you know amazing natural light um, people are more productive from these buildings um, and yeah it just means that people can kind of live a kind of low carbon um, kind of lifestyle yeah. essentially um, passive house for those of you who don't know it's a german standard and um, the building is just crazy efficient essentially we've got 143 solar panels on the roof um, Passive house buildings make as much energy as they, as they use. This building makes more energy. So the extra energy goes back to the grid. It's very cool. The building maintains a, a temperature of 20 degrees, so it's nice and comfortable throughout the year. Um, these windows open and close depending on whether it gets too hot or too cold. Having a space like this where we make sure our rates are accessible as possible, so you can work from this space nine to five, Monday to Friday for 99 pounds. We feel like it should be like this hybrid, like go in to a remote place like this or like, you know, close to your home, hopefully that you can walk or cycle to, right. you know, get your car off the road unless you really need it. So, yeah, so um, that's what we're trying to achieve. And buildings like this just tick all our boxes. This eco town serves as a great inspiration for the design of future developments so that they too can be constructed in a manner that ensures the long term sustainability of communities around the world and the environment. Thank you very much for watching. Please let us know down in the comments where you'd like us to go next. And give us a thumbs up if you want to see more videos like this from us in the future. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one.